Our server has been hacked, and in 20 minutes, every mob in Minecraft will die. Me and my brother Milo have to build custom houses for each mob before it's too late, including Ian, the trusty iron golem. That's right, Milo. We need to start getting the materials to build a warden house. First, we need some skulk, skulk catalysts, and some skulk sensors. Do you think you can do that, Milo? Yeah, I'm also gonna use some blue wool! Milo, no! Blue wool is for zombies. Instead, we need to use skulk. It looks exactly like the warden does. We've got to build a house for the warden and every other mob in Minecraft. The warden is what we will do first, though, because he is really scary. If he finds out we have built a house for anyone other than him first, he will be really, really mad at us. And even if we save his life from the hacker destroying all the mobs on the server, he'll be so angry at us, he'll sonic boom us into oblivion. Get out of like the warden. He's been really mean to me lately. Really, Milo? What's the warden been saying? Pretty much. One time I was in the deep dark and he blasted me out of nowhere. Aw, that's really sad, Milo. Don't worry. Now that the warden is living in our mob city and not in the deep dark anymore, he won't be able to blast you. You should be totally safe from him, and I will make sure the warden cannot blast you through the walls of his house. We're going to make this house so good that it won't just save him from the hacker, it will also give him the best house he has ever had. Yeah, but if I see the warden walking around, I'm gonna give him a funny look. Hmm, I don't think he'll see you, Milo. The warden is very famously blind. What? Yeah, Milo, that's why he has to use sound to hear you like a bat. Oh, you're so silly. While you come to the realization that the warden is actually blind, I'm going to start building the top of the warden house. It's important that we use blocks like this one. By using cyan wool, we help make the top of the warden look really realistic. Now all we have to do is make his mouth, his horns, and the insides of the actual house, and we'll have completed the first house. Let's go! The warden better be so grateful that we're saving him from the evil hacker. Exactly, Milo. I think all the mobs we save will be really grateful, but I hope the warden is especially grateful. Evil hacker is no joke. He's trying to wipe out every single mob from the face of Minecraft. That is really sad. We've made so many amazing mob friends. Yeah, I don't want to lose any of them. Especially not Ian, the iron golem. We need to make every other mob house first, because if we make a house for Ian before we make the mob houses, oh, Ian, the iron and Gollum would try and attack the mobs to protect us. He would not understand that we're trying to save everybody. That is why we have to get building really, really fast, Milo. Otherwise, we don't stand a chance against the hacker. I really want to make sure we save Ian because he's my best friend. Hey, I thought I was your best friend. Oh, um, yeah, I guess so. Milo, we're going to have a chat about this later, but for now, we need to make sure we build the warden's mouth. I am going to use black concrete because that is the most dark void block there is. If we can make sure that this really does look like the real warden's mouth, we will help make sure the warden knows exactly where to live. No warden would want to live in a warden house that doesn't look like himself. That would just be embarrassing. He would never agree to live in that. Hey, look! It looks like the warden's really taking a march of me! Hey, Milo, the warden's not trying to eat you. This is just the warden's house. Be careful you don't go in the real warden's mouth like that. He might try to actually eat you, which could be really, really bad. I do not want to be a warden's snack today. Thank you very much. <laughs> no way. Instead, we just need to play skull catalysts all along the bottom. Once we do this, I'm going to use a pretty cool method to decorate the inside. We're going to make it look exactly like the real deep dark. First, we need to grab some deep slate and not just regular deep slate. We also need to grab polished and cobbled deep slate. We're going to place the polished deep slate on a ring around the edge, just like this. We will miss some spots, but that's on purpose. It's all part of my amazing artistic design. Chip, I thought of something really scary. Really? What scary thing did you think of, Milo? What Hmm, I don't think that's possible. The real deep dark has a special energy that flows through the warden. That is how he is able to use his sonic boom there. This is not the real deep dark, so it won't have that same effect. Whoa, using warped doors is a great idea, Milo. I think we should continue using warped wood for the inside. I'm going to grab some warped stairs and some warped fences, as well as some warped slabs to make the rest of the inside of this place. We have to make sure we build everything pretty big, otherwise the warden simply won't fit. 
right? The warden is a pretty big guy, and if he can't fit in his own house, he won't want to stay here. He might try to run away, and that will put him in serious danger of being killed by the hacker. Maybe I should give him double doors just so he fits. Yeah, good idea, Milo. The warden is very, very tall. He will not fit in a small building like this one. That's why I'm making sure the stairs are as open as possible. This entire building is designed to use as much space as possible. That's why the warden will love it. He'll actually fit inside. Yeah, but won't let me put more doors on top of these ones. Milo, you don't have to use regular warped doors. You need to use warped trapdoors, just like this. Now, if we right click them, it should look like a regular door. Wow. It's okay, Milo. We all learn at different speeds. Yours just happens to be a little slower than most people's. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I'll let you think about that one. For now, we need to think about building an amazing fence to stop the warden from falling off. Let's make sure we build it right down the middle. It's important to use the same color of wood that we've used for the rest of the wood around this place. Yep, I actually have a really good idea for something. Okay, I'm excited to hear this. What is it, Milo? I'm gonna turn his mouth into a window. Uh, actually, that's not a bad idea at all. The warden is going to love looking out of his deep dark house into the, uh, not very deep and not very dark overworld. I'm sure the void that the hacker will kill all these animals into will be very deep and very dark, even too deep and dark for the warden. Let's grab some flower pots so that we can start placing down some lovely lanterns and decorations for the warden. I think the warden will love cornflowers because it's really close to the color blue, which is his favorite color after all. Yeah, blue is a very good color. That's something I can agree with the warden on. Yeah, you and the warden can agree with a lot about the color blue. Now we also need to place some chains from the ceiling. This will help light up the place in the same way that the real Deep Dark is lit up, using awesome soul lanterns. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. We also need to make sure we grab a bed and that we grab some cyan shulker boxes. We need to grab these ones and not some other random ones, because this is the Warden's favorite color. Look Milo, the Warden now has custom colorful storage. <laughs> Exactly, Milo. Let's also give him an ender chest right next door. It fits the color scheme really, really well. And we will also need to grab some cyan carpets to put on the floor like this. We can add them on every level. The warden loves silence and walking on carpets actually cancels out noise. This means that the warden will love every level of this place. Speaking of silence, there is nothing more silent than a library. That's why we need to build bookshelves so that the warden can have a library of his own. If he has a perfect zone of silence, no sound will ever get inside, and he will really, really enjoy it here. Let's grab some books for him. One of the warden's favorite books is Swift Sneak, so we are going to be placing Swift Sneak enchanted books inside this bookshelf. This way, anybody that wants a nice Swift Sneak pair of books can come in here and get one. Yep, there's one little problem. What is it, Milo? What, didn't you say the warden was blind? These might need to be audio books. Oh, that's so true. Let's add a jukebox right next door with a couple of the warden's favorite CDs. Let's get an item frame so that we can properly display them. The music disc that the warden loves the most is this one. It comes from the deep dark, but he also loves this one. And his second favorite one is Pig Step. It's pretty cool how much music the warden enjoys. I guess when you don't see very well, you get really good at hearing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the warden will totally love it here. Let's just add a couple more carpets to the bottom level, just to make sure it's as nice and soundproof as possible. Whoa, Milo, we've built one out of the six houses we need. It's already looking pretty awesome, but if we want to build enough houses to save every mob and Ian the Iron Golem, we're going to need to go a lot quicker than that. Yeah, that's really true, Chip. We better speed up back. We totally will. I think here is the best place to build our next house. We need to grab some concrete for what we're about to make. We're about to make some pretty awesome houses that need to look a very specific way, Milo. Concrete? What could concrete be for? I'll let you guess, Milo. This next house is not just going to be for one mob. It is actually going to be for three. They will live together because they all live inside of caves. That's why we are placing them inside the same house. They love living in the cave so much that we're going to make one big cave house for all of them. This is the first mob out of all the three. Oh, yes, it's a slime. 
No, Milo, it's not a slime. Don't worry, I'll keep building more and more of it until you guess. These concretes need to be placed, but I see why you thought it was slime. I built it too smooth. I need to add some more lime green wool colors. It's not slime, it's just lime. Now, if I add some more texturing around here, it might start to look a little bit like what it's meant to, but there is still one thing we have not added that I really need to. We need to add some gray concrete to the center of these black voids, and boom, do you see what we're trying to build now, Milo? Milo? Yeah, it's a little froggy! No, Milo, it's a creeper face. We're building three different mobs that all live in caves. We're going to build a creeper, a zombie, and a skeleton. What? Hey, that's not nice, Milo. I don't think these bozos like you either. They are undead mobs, and they're going to be pretty deadly if we don't build them a nice house. Yeah, I guess that's really true. I feel bad now. Hey, don't feel bad, Milo. Just try and be nice to them. We don't want all the new residents in our amazing mob town to be mad at us. Yeah, I don't want them to be mad at all, because maybe they could be my new best friends. Yeah, maybe. They totally could. Hmm, I don't think this is what a zombie looks like. I'm going to need to grab a zombie skull and have a look at what the real zombie is. Okay, I think I built this totally wrong. We need to move the eyes a little bit downwards, just like this. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Now, we also need to add a little bit of a beard area. The zombie did not shave last night, so we need to make sure we build that properly in. I think we need to use a different type of green. Let's use these green colors. We'll use dark green terracotta for the edge of the beard, and for the bottom bits, we can totally use green concrete powder. Oh, Oh yeah, this looks so cool already. This really does look like a zombie. Yeah, really does, Chip. You're pretty good at building. Thanks, Milo. That's what I've been saying all along. Now we also need to build the zombie some eyebrows. He can get pretty grumpy being a zombie, so we'll need to make sure we build it very, very right. If we get this wrong, the zombie will be so mad at us, he'll eat our brains. And we don't want that. We need our brains to protect all the mobs from the hacker. Yeah, plus my brain is really like super smart. Yeah, I don't know about that, Milo. Your brain is certainly something. I think we need to replace this green concrete powder with green wool. Oh yeah, this looks way better. Now there is only one more mob house we need to make before we're ready. I'm gonna get ahead of the curve on this one and start making the skeleton skull with a reference in mind. We're gonna need to grab a bunch of different colors of concrete. Let's grab white, the light gray, and we'll also grab some clay. These do a really good job at showing the colors of the skeleton. Let's make sure we properly build this out as well. By not only using concrete and using wool as well, we help make sure we use all the colors correctly. Let's place all the gray down here. This is what a real skeleton looks like. I can't wait to see the skeleton's reaction to this, Milo. I bet he's totally gonna love his brand new, very well-built skeleton house. Let's also make sure we build some dark gray down here and some light gray right over here. You probably really like it. I would love if my house looked like that. Yeah, Milo, I do not think you want to be living inside a giant skeleton. It would get really, really creepy really quickly. And wait a minute, there's a bit of an emergency. I'm using clay when instead we need to be using light gray concrete powder. Oh, wow, that looks way better already. I can't believe I was using clay before. That is so embarrassing. One big myth about skeletons is everybody thinks that skeletons are white when skeletons are actually a very light gray color. The skeletons don't like it when you get that wrong. You better make Make sure you build the skeleton house in the right color. Luckily, that is exactly what we're doing, and whoa, these mob houses look so cool! One thing I definitely will do, though, is replace a little bit of this zombie with some nice dark gray. Oh yeah, that looks way more like a zombie now. All of these mob houses are pretty well built, but we need to add a little bit more color around them. Let's add some blue around the zombie and some lime concrete around the creeper. It has to go all the way around, and wow, Milo, you've done a really good job building the back of these. I'm so impressed. We make an amazing team. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. You're doing a really good job. I'm just going to place some gray concrete at the bottom of this skeleton house to make sure that the skeleton feels nice and at home in a really cool dark area. The blue makes the zombie look like he's actually wearing the classic zombie shirt. Whoa, this is so cool. I think inside the zombie's mouth, we can actually add the door. For the doors, I think we should probably add some dark oak. It looks pretty close to the dark green color of the zombie. Perfect. Now, once we enter the house, we will need to add some pretty good flooring. We will 
will also have two rooms on either side. One will lead into the skeleton house and one will lead into the creeper house. I don't think we'll use any regular blocks though. We're going to be using dark oak and some classic stone as well as some mossy cobblestone. Most people do not want to live inside a mossy cobblestone house, but these mobs actually come from the dungeons. That is why they each deserve an amazing house with their amazing stone blocks right next to each other. The stone blocks can help decorate the roof, not the top roof, of course. That is going to be the official colors of each of these mobs so that it really does look like they're living inside giant versions of their heads. These mobs are gonna love these houses. I do not think anything else could have better protected them against the hacker about to delete every mob from the server. These three mobs are some of the biggest enemies of the Iron Golem. There are some bigger enemies on the way, but these ones are very important to get out of the way. Once we build all of these houses, we'll be really, really close to building the Iron Golem houses and saving our friend Ian, Milo. Yeah, I really wanna save Ian. That's my top priority. Yeah, me too. And saving every other mob too. That's why we need to make sure every single mob's house is really, really nice. I think we also need to pick the plank choices that best fit each of these different mobs. I think the skeleton house will look awesome with this ruby red mangrove planks. Whoa, it already looks so cool. And in the creeper house, I think jungle planks fit very, very well. It's a really cool color that I know the creeper will absolutely love. Now that we've built all this, we really need to add in the cobblestone and the mossy cobblestone to the ceiling. By adding these blocks, we make this place really feel like home, which of course for these mobs is the dungeon, so it needs to feel as dungeon-y as possible. Yeah, these blocks look moldy! Hey, the zombie's moldy too. You can't say that here. The zombies love the mold. That's why we need to make sure we properly use all of these blocks as much as we can. It really, really warms the zombie's heart. Or at least I think it warms the zombie's heart. I don't know if the zombie actually has a heart. I know they definitely don't have a brain. We also need to grab some walls. By using mossy cobblestone and mossy stone walls, we help make sure that the roof of this place drips down nicely into the floors below. Oh yeah, doesn't this look awesome, my Milo? It does, but you like me to do it in the other room. Yeah, that's a great idea, Milo. While you do that, I can continue adding chains to this room. It's important that we add the chains exactly how the zombie likes them. The zombie's chains normally drip from the ceiling of the zombie dungeon. They absolutely make it feel so creepy inside. That's why the zombie loves them. He's a bit of a creepy guy, so it fits his look very, very well. We also need to add some redstone torches. Redstone torches are some of the creepiest blocks in the entire game. Most other blocks of light look really, really pretty and have a nice blue cool glow or a really warm orange one. These ones though have a creepy red glow that look kind of like evil red eyes. Oh wow, if we move the torches up, they look like zombie eyes staring in. That is so cool. Now we need to grab some green beds for this zombie or even better, maybe a light blue and dark blue bed. This looks exactly like the zombie's clothes. Now because the zombie's head is always falling off, we need to grab some spare ones. This way, the zombie will always have a head if he ever needs to grab a new one. He'll never ever run out. Let's also grab a chest for the zombie because that is what spawns inside of a real dungeon. He'll feel so at home in this way. Let's also put some spruce trap doors above the doorway. This way, the zombie can store some of his favorite things, like a flower pot with his favorite flower inside, the dead bush. He really loves the dead bush. It reminds him of his home, the graveyard. And he also loves the gravestone, so we'll add a couple on this wall. We'll even add in some signs that say RIP on the gravestones. This way the zombie knows exactly what they are and doesn't get confused. We can even grab some glow ink sacks and some light green dye to make sure the RIP signs really stand out and fit the green color of the room. This looks so awesome. We're just missing carpets. By adding blue carpets and light blue carpets, we help make sure that this room really does look like a zombie. Yeah, if I was a zombie, I'd be loving this room. Me too, Milo. Whoa, the creepy room roof looks awesome. You've done a great job. Thanks. I think I'm getting really good at the cave stuff. You totally are. Why don't I decorate this room while you build the final cave room in the skeleton head, Milo? Sounds Oh yeah, it does sound great. I'm so excited to build the creeper room. This one's gonna be a little different to the zombie room. We will still have the chains and the cave ceiling, but there are gonna be some blocks in here that the zombie would not like. No redstone torches are allowed in the creeper room, that's for sure, because there is gonna be something a little dangerous in here. We will need to grab some bedrock. The creeper bed will be surrounded by bedrock. That is one important way that the creeper doesn't blow up his house during his explosive nightmares. They can really send a shockwave 
sleep through a place. That's why he only sleeps surrounded by bedrock. It's really important to him. And we can also add some obsidian surrounding his chests. His obsidian shulker box chest will be pitch black to blend in with the obsidian. Instead of a window, he actually has a storage room inside of his mouth. It's pretty different to the warden's house, but it's still awesome in the same way. Let's add some obsidian on this wall just to make sure it does not get blown up. This creeper's house is pretty cool, but the creeper has to get his explosiveness from somewhere. That is why he actually has TNT in the house as well. First, I'm going to put the TNT in some item frames. That is pretty important. We can't just be placing TNT on the floor. That is very dangerous. Let's also place TNT in this item frame, and we can even grab more of the spruce planks to add on top of it. Oh yeah, that looks so awesome. I think we also need to grab a painting. The creeper definitely has a favorite one, and there's a pretty clear reason why. If we place the painting here, wow, look, it actually has a creeper face. He really loves the painting because it reminds him of his mother, who also is a creeper. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now we actually need to place in the real TNT, which is a little bit scary. I say we build it in a nice compartment in the floor. This way the creeper won't accidentally blow it up and destroy his entire house. That would be a big disaster. And I know the creeper doesn't want that at all. It would put him and all of his mob friends in danger, causing the hacker to know exactly where we are. Okay, we can add TNT in this place and we'll add a blast proof glass. I think this blast proof glass is perfect. Wow, this already looks just like the creeper's bedroom. But we also do need to place a flower pot. And there is one flower that I know the creeper would absolutely love. And that is a torch flower. It reminds him of the explosions that he causes with his own TNT. Oh yeah, this room is looking so cool. Let's just add a carpet and then we can start building the skeleton room. Oh, I'm so excited to work on that one. Hey, Milo. What? How's the skeleton roof coming along? Yeah, well, it's pretty much done, isn't it? That's amazing. Now I can actually start building the skeleton room. This room is going to look like an actual graveyard. The zombie only has gravestones on his shelves, but the skeleton is going to have them everywhere. He even will have patches of podzol on the floor to look really, really spooky. Not to mention some soul fire burning around, just like all the souls from the graveyard. Yeah, because just a guy without a soul. Okay, Milo, you've been listening to some crazy internet theories, but I know more about the skeleton. He's actually a really cool guy. He's just misunderstood. We can even add some amazing target blocks in here because I know he loves to practice his archery. How is he misunderstood if he keeps shooting me? I don't know, Milo. Maybe he just has a bone to pick with you. He's got lots of bones. Yeah, he totally does have lots of bones to pick. That's why I'm going to add an item frame where he can have some bone picks just to clean himself. He cannot use a real shower. His bones get all soggy. It's really weird. And he also can't use a real bed. He can only sleep on really hard rocky surfaces like pure cobblestone. What? That's pretty bad. Why don't we give him a bed? Uh, Milo, because skeletons don't like to sleep in beds. Their bones get tangled up in the covers and it can be a real headache trying to get them out. And when a skull has a headache, it can be a real bad day. Yikes. Thank goodness I'm not a skeleton. I know, me too. We're not skeletons at all. I don't even have bones. What does that even mean? Uh, it means I don't carry bones around, Milo. That would be insane. Only creepy people do that. All I do is write nice signs on skeletons' rooms. Well, I guess I'm a creepy guy because I have bones in my pocket. What? Milo, whose bones are those? Well, just in case I meet a little dog and I want him to be my friend. How did you get those bones, Milo? You can't be holding bones in a skeleton house. They get really, really rude about that. Well, Milo, go put the bone back where you found it, please. Yes, champ. Oh my gosh, Milo, you can't be removing bones around skeletons. That's a terrible idea. We've now officially built two out of the six houses. That is really good. It means that we just need to build four more before the hacker destroys everything. Oh my gosh, quickly, Chip, let's do it. The next house that we need to build is the Illager house, Milo. I've been really excited. For this one. Yeah, I bet. Me too. We need to grab black concrete, black terracotta, and yellow concrete, Milo. Yellow concrete? Yeah, we need to build the Evoker. He is one of the most dangerous Illagers, and we've got to build him pretty tall. He needs to be the main part of the Illager household. They're going to be a pretty big community, and they will all live together. If we don't build this right, Milo, they will not want to move in, and they will get so offended that they stay away forever, meaning that they die in the attack from the hacker. Even though I really don't like the Illagers, I 
don't want them to die, so we better do this one right now. Exactly, Milo. I had the exact same thought. Now we need to build a little bend outwards. These are going to be the Avoca's arms. They fold inwards exactly the same way that the other arms do. Oh yeah, this is looking so cool already. I can already tell that these are the arms of the Avoca. We also need to make sure we properly build the wrists too. Oh yeah, this is looking perfect. Ian the Iron Golem hates pillagers. So if we build a house to keep them inside of, he won't be angry and he won't try and escape. That is just one way we are keeping our amazing friends safe from the hack attack. <laughs> We hope that Ian's doing okay. Me too. I don't even know where he's hiding at the moment. We better make sure that we find him and build him a house soon. If we don't, we could be in serious trouble and so will Ian. <laughs> All right, now that we built the back of this awesome evoker, we need to start building the top of it. I think building an evoker head is going to be pretty difficult. I'll need to really, really think about it. While I do this, Milo, make sure you totally keep building the sides of it. I need to make his arms a little bit thicker. Otherwise, he'll just look like a weird side sideways pole. I do not want him to look like a sideways pole. Yeah, I don't think the evokers do either. They would totally never forgive me for that. That would be really, really uncomfortable if I built a sideways pole and had to show it to them. They'd never talk to me. Yeah, and that would be really sad for you because they're like your only friends. What? Milo, they aren't my only friends. I thought you were my friend. Well, we're kind of friends when I think so. What? Milo, that's crazy. You can't be saying that. Well, Sorry, Milo. I do not mean to be mean to you. I and I don't mean to make you cry either. Well, that's good then. We're friends again. Thanks, Milo. I'm glad it was that easy. One friend that it will not be easy to recover if we lose him in the hack attack, though, is Ian the Iron Golem. If the hacker destroys him forever, we'll never be able to recover the friendship, even if we apologize a thousand times, because we'll have lost him to the hacking void. Yeah, this is a very important situation, and we have to do this. Exactly, Milo. Once we finish building the sides and back of this Evoca's head, we can actually start making the official features. Whoa, that definitely looks like an Evoca. Creepy as usual. We need to add his classic giant nose that even hangs downwards beyond his face. Yeah, I don't like his vibe at all. Whoa, Milo, you almost got stuck underneath the arms. Yeah, I know he did. I would have been really scared. That would have totally sucked. I'm really glad you did not get stuck there. And I think we also definitely need to add some emerald green eyes. The Evokas love to steal emeralds from the villagers. So by adding official emerald green eyes, we really help make this Evoka as realistic as possible. We also need to make him realistic by adding giant angry eyebrows. He's really yeah, he totally is. He is one of the scariest mobs ever. And whoa, I can almost feel his anger just from looking at him. Milo, don't stand on his eyebrows. He might get really, really angry at you and try to attack you using his vex. Hey, Chip, look, I can make my eyebrows angry as well. Whoa, that looks almost exactly like the Evoca. Careful, Milo, you're soaking up a little too much of that anger. Yeah, well, I'm just going to... Okay, once you stop being angry, let me know, because we still need to build the bottom of this Evoca. I need to dig out the bottom layer of his Evoca wizard robe and replace it with some blue terracotta. These are what the Evoca's shoes actually look like, and we're gonna need to add an entrance into the Evoca, Milo. If we don't, none of the pillagers will be able to get into the pillager tower. Hey, yeah! wouldn't even be really a house at all. No, it totally wouldn't. That is why we are grabbing bamboo stairs just like this, as well as some bamboo doors. See, it looks exactly like the Evoca's colors. It blends in really, really well. And once we go inside, we can add some amazing carpets to the floor to make it really match the yellow color. I'm loving this design, champ. Thanks, Milo. I'm really, really proud of it. And I think inside we can even have some ladders. These ladders will take every pillager inside all the way up to the top where we will dig a hole into the pillager head yeah this is gonna be the main house section of the pillager section sure but there are still lots of houses for every mob we have to build milo this is not the final step here let's also replace this yellow with a little bit more yellow on the inside this way we can dig out a ton more space over here oh yeah we are not missing a single spot to include more room for our amazing mobs in if we make this house as big as possible we really give the mobs all the space they deserve yeah, 
Yeah, I agree, Milo. It definitely is crazy. Let's make sure we add enough space to go up into the roof section. It's important that we don't miss this, Milo. If we miss the roof and the Illager head, they could totally not like it. Yeah, and that would be really bad. Exactly. And I think for the top room, we can even make it out of emeralds. There's not just a normal creature we'll be putting in this top room. We're going to put a Ravager inside. <laughs> Yep, exactly. A total Ravager. Ravagers are very scary. But before we do that, we need to grab beds for every single pillager. Let's grab black and gray beds because they're very dramatic and very moody. The king illagers will get to sit on these gray ones underneath the yellow robe. I think the king illagers will definitely be evokers. Yeah, because those guys are always grumpy. Yeah, they're totally grumpy. Every illager is actually. I don't know why. In the Ravager section, we will even add chains hanging from the ceiling. This is to show just how evil and dangerous the Ravagers are. You need to chain them up if they get too crazy, otherwise they may escape. Ravagers are my least favorite of all of them. Yeah, me too. They are so dangerous. I can't wait until the moment we spawn down all the mobs, Milo. That is going to be very important, and we can't let ourselves forget. If we do, we would really be letting them all down. Instead, we need to make sure we add all of the chests to make sure these pillagers have perfect storage. If they have good storage, they can fill it with all their emeralds emeralds that they've won from destroying villages. If they're gonna destroy villages, at least they're gonna get some rewards for it. It did not all go to waste. We just have to make sure we do not let Ian the Iron Golem see these emeralds. He will really, really be angry and jealous and try to destroy them if he sees them. Come to think of it, we should also probably build a defense against Ian the Iron Golem around the Avoka house. He is not gonna take too kindly to us sheltering his mortal enemy, the Illager Pillager Avoka Club. Yeah, even even though I really like him, he can be a little aggressive sometimes. Yeah, exactly. That's why we need to take important steps to keeping every mob safe, even if those mobs are the Evokers and the Pillagers and the Vindicators. So true, champ. Look, Milo, we've already built three out of the six houses. We're halfway. We just have to build three more, and then we will save every mob in Minecraft. Let's go. The next house we will make will be a nether themed house. We're going to build the nether fortress, Milo, so we're gonna have to go quick. The nether fortress is a pretty big build and it will not build itself. Oh, and we don't have a lot of time, do we? No, we don't. The hack is coming closer and closer. The longer we leave this build, the sooner the hack will come and destroy everything. This nether fortress has to go well, otherwise we will be out of luck and the mobs will be destroyed. I can't believe this is happening to us. I know, neither did I, and I don't think the mobs would have thought so either. It is crazy that they didn't realize this. I wish we could have stopped it sooner. I need to grab some nether brick slabs to build some platforms on the edge so that the mobs do not fall off. If they do, that could be really bad. These nether mobs are pretty sensitive from being taken away from their nether home. If we drop them off the edge of a building, they'll be so sore, and they won't have the lava in their familiar lands to fall back into. The nether mobs are very, very in tune with the lava. It is very important that we provide a nice amount of lava for them inside of the nether habitat. If we don't add proper amounts of lava, they'll probably get so cold that they get the flu and die. Oh my gosh, no! That would suck. It would almost be as bad as if the hacker totally destroyed them. That is why we need to put all our effort into protecting these mobs from the hacker, Milo. Even evil mobs from the nether. Yeah, we really need to protect them. Luckily, they got the best Job. Exactly. Those best guys are totally us. Let's add another platform to this nether fortress. It can go even higher and it can tower over the other one. The nether mobs that will live up here will totally be blazers and they can fly. Why don't you make this platform one more block thick in this direction, Milo, while I continue making the top of this nether fortress. Sounds good to me. Thanks, Milo. I can't wait. Now, at the top of this blaze section, we really need to make sure we add a big, big wall for them. The blazers often have their own little section of the fortress. It actually looks just like this. They even have stairs going up into it. It's where the blaze spawner lives. We've got to make sure we do this blaze spawner justice and don't totally build it wrong. If we do, the blaze will never forgive us. That's why we need to build nether brick fences around the edge just like this. It's exactly what they have in real nether fortresses. The 
Blaze love this area. That's why they decided to put their spawner there. It will be the official home of the Blaze in our Nether Fortress as well. They're totally going to be so happy about it, and they'll be really grateful to us, Milo. This is an important part of making sure that we do not upset the Nether mobs. They can have a little, uh, fiery tempers. So if we upset them, we could never hear the end of it, and they might get so mad that they destroy every other mob, even if we've worked so hard to save them all. Oh, they better be grateful, because we've worked really hard for them. Exactly, Milo. We totally have. And instead of placing a spawner inside here, we are going to place a bedrock block, and we can even light it on fire. By using a flint and steel, we totally allow the elements of the nether to come here into the overworld. Whoa, the fortress is already looking really cool, but it is very important that we add netherrack to the floor. Milo, if you make this pillar one more block thick in this direction, I can add more netherrack to the floor than we've ever seen. This will really help bring the heat and make sure that all the nether mobs we protect from the hacker's evil destruction will always be happy and safe here in their new habitat. You got it, Chip. Thanks, Milo. I know I can count on you. We make a really good team protecting all these mobs, especially when we protect our amazing friend, Ian the Iron Golem. He's such a cool guy. Remember when he gave you that rose for your birthday, Milo? Yeah, it was so friendly. I really hope that we can build this house soon. Me too, Milo. Don't worry. We're almost there. We just have to make sure we build the other mobs' houses first. If we build him before the other mobs, we could forget all about them, and then the mobs would never be saved from the hacker. By leaving Ian last, we make sure we won't forget him, because Ian is our amazing friend that we would never forget to protect from an evil hacker like this. I think Ian's pretty much my best friend. Milo, don't say that. I'm your best friend. Yeah, but you're sort of weird. What? Why am I weird? Because you say lots of big words. Big words? Milo, by weird, do you just mean smart? Well, yes. Milo, you can't just call smart people weird. That's really mean. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm not a nerd. I'm just really good at making sure that our friends do not die to evil hackers. I think that's a very important skill, Milo. Yeah, it is important, and I'm also helping you. Yeah, that makes you a nerd as well. Hey, I would never be a nerd or a noob. Hey, Milo, you were a noob all the time. That's why I always have to save you. And would a noob know this? When I use this flint and steel on this soul sand, it will make blue fire. Blue fire? No way, Milo. I've witnessed it myself. See? The blue fire is real. What the? I didn't know that! Yeah, only a pro like me would know how to make blue fire. And a pro like me would also know it's a very important part of the nether that all of the mobs inside the nether habitat really, really need in order to stay nice and toasty. That's why we're including it in our super cool nether section. Oh, this soul sand's making me so yeah, soul sand will do that, Milo. But if soul sand makes you slow, glowstone makes you glow. That's why we're going to add it underneath all this nether fortress area. It is what the real nether has. And since we can't exactly build the roof of the nether, this is the next best thing. Yeah, this is looking good and all, but we need to get moving because there's not a lot of time. I know, Milo. I'm pretty sure I consider this nether fortress to be totally finished. We've already finished four out of the six houses, so we only need to do two more. Oh, yeah, this is great. Let's do it. This second last house will go right next to the nether fortress because it still belongs in the nether, even though it is a totally different mob. What? I'm not going to tell you right away, Milo. I know this mob really scares you, so I need to make sure you're ready, okay? All right, I'll prepare myself. This mob lives in the nether, but is not made out of fire, and it's also not a pig. It's a special mob that we're going to need to build a special containment area for. Containment area? That doesn't sound friendly. No, it's not, and neither is this mob, Milo. It can be very, very dangerous. It even has explosive powers and can shoot out explosive skulls in any direction. It needs to be summoned, but it can only be summoned with three heads of wither skeletons all put together. Oh, does that mean it's a little slime? No, Milo, it's not a slime. I don't know why you keep guessing slime. Have oh. slimes been bothering you lately or something? I've been having really crazy nightmares about them. Oh, that explains a lot then. Well, no, Milo, this mob is not a slime. It is a lot more dangerous than a slime. While this mob does not split into three of itself, it does have three heads. That is why you need to place three wither skeleton heads. Those three wither skeleton heads add up to being three real wither heads. This mob is the wither, Milo, one of the most dangerous mobs in the entire game. Wow, my gosh, Chip. I don't want to have anything to do with this guy. 
I know, Milo, the wither can be very, very scary, especially when you're building him a house. You don't want to do anything that might upset him, but we don't have a choice, Milo. If we don't build the wither a house and the hacker gets his hands on him, who knows what evil devastation he could do? The wither is already very powerful and very destructive. Imagine how dangerous a hacked wither would be. Oh, gosh, Chip, don't make me imagine those things. Okay, Milo, I won't make you imagine those things, I promise. Instead, just imagine a world where we build a secure containment area for the Wither and stop his evil reign of terror across the overworld. That is the only solution. Yeah, that Pretty good. Yeah, I think it really would be. That is why we just need to make sure we do this properly. We just have to build one more layer of the Wither's ribs right over here, and then we can start building the Wither's famous heads. Dude, he's such a freak. Hey, don't call him a freak, Milo. That might just make him angrier and try to attack us more. Instead, it's just going to be freaky how well we have captured him. No one has ever captured the Wither like this before. We will be the official first. That's why we need to try extra hard to do it right. Do you think you can do that, Milo? Well, I think I can try. Thanks, Milo. I think I can too. We just have to try together. That's why the first wither skull we build needs to be really well made. I'm gonna add in the white concrete right over here. This looks exactly like the wither skeleton's eyes. Yeah, it actually super does. Thanks, Milo. I'm glad you agree. Adding in all of this extra detail, we really help make sure the wither cannot just randomly escape. That would be bad. The wither would be able to do so much damage across the overworld. We need to summon in this wither ourselves, otherwise he won't properly come to life. But that's good, Milo, because the more we can summon him, the more control we have over making sure he doesn't spawn in a really destructive way, killing a bunch of the nature and wildlife. The wither doesn't just attack players like most mobs. The wither is actually so evil, he will attack any mob he sees, even harmless ones like pigs and sheep and little birdies. What a meanie! Yeah, he really is a meanie. That's why we cannot let him wreak his destructive evil across the land. I'm gonna make sure we build this wither head properly. It's gonna be a little difficult to build the skull right, but I think we can totally do it. If we grab a wither skeleton skull, I'll be able to see exactly what he looks like. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good idea of how to do this now. Instead of using black for the wither skull, the real wither actually glows a crazy white color. Oh yeah, this is really starting to look like the actual wither. That is terrifying. In the center of his face is darkness, just like there's darkness in the center of his heart. Oh yeah, the wither can be very, very scary. We need to build him properly, Milo. If we mess this up, we might accidentally summon him, which would be really, really bad. Chip, this one's head looks a bit flat. Don't worry, Milo. It's not going to be flat forever. Pretty soon, we're going to build another element to this head, which will make it no longer flat. It will mean the wither's head properly looks thick and normal like it's meant to. See? Now the wither's head is no longer short, and we'll also be able to turn it into a nice big box. Hey, yeah, that looks good! I agree, Milo. Let's make sure it keeps looking good going all the way around. Let's build the skull continuing over to this side. It needs to be a perfect shape because inside the wither's skull is where we will keep the real wither. Oh. Often. Yeah, me too, Milo. That's why it's really high and up away from everything. If this was all in the middle of all the other houses, the wither could get really angry and destroy them. This is an extra security measure to make sure he can't totally be destructive. If he's away from all the mobs, so far away he can't even see them, he might be less angry and less evil. One thing about us is we do security really well. Yeah, we totally do. We never mess up security. It is way too important. That is why taking care of the wither is a very, very strong duty that has been given to us. Not just anybody gets trusted with this responsibility, Milo. Only us, because nobody else knows how to do it. Many, many sad adventurers have tried, but they have all been destroyed by the might of the wither. It's really dangerous. I'm really glad we're able to do this together to make sure we are not in danger at all. Me too. Otherwise, I'd be crying or something. Yeah, probably, Milo. It would be understandable, though. The wither would make anyone cry, even the most tough person ever. All right, Milo, I'm going to build the inside of this wither right now. First, we need to grab some official bedrock. This is one of the only blocks that the wither cannot explode. If we tried using another block, he might actually break out and be totally ruining everything. <laughs> Me too, Milo. And one other thing. Summoning the wither can be pretty difficult. It takes a while and is a very, very hard process. Oh no, Milo, you better get out of there. Yeah, you just trapped me! 
Yay! Sorry, Milo, I did not mean to do that. Instead, I mean to trap the wither in here, but since we're going to need to spawn all of these mobs in a very quick pinch, we're going to also need to spawn the wither in a quick pinch. That's why I'm going to build the start of the wither summoning object really right now. Yeah, and I'm just gonna put a bed down for him in case. Uh, sure, Milo, I'm sure he'd really appreciate that. Right now, I'm going to build the wither like this, and oh goodness, I need to make sure I place the final wither skeleton skull right over here. This way, there is no chance it will accidentally get activated before it is time to save the mobs from the hacker. Yup, that's a really smart idea, Chip. Let's block this up with glowstone. We'll need to return there, and we can replace it with bedrock and grey concrete when the time comes. That's so true. Five out of six houses built. Milo, we're doing so well. We only need to build one more house, and then we can spawn all of the mobs before the hacker arrives. Quickly now, let's do it! This final house is going to be pretty crazy, Milo. Do you think you can do it with me? Yes, I'm gonna help you! Perfect, Milo! We need to place endstone all around this area. This final house is going to be for the endermen and the shulkers and, most importantly, the ender dragon. The ender dragon! Oh, he's way too scary! Yeah, he can be pretty terrifying, Milo, but we still need to build him a house. He's a part of the mobs just like everybody else, and the hacker wants to destroy him too. Fine, I guess we can build one for the silly ender dragon, even though he kills me every time. That's the spirit, Milo. It's important to treat everybody like your friend, even the people that kill you over and over again. What? That does not sound healthy. It's not about being healthy, Milo. It's about being right and making sure you save absolutely every mob you can instead of letting the hacker just destroy them. Now that we've made this amazing area into a big endstone circle, we need to start building the pillars of the end. These are where the ender dragon draws his power from, Milo. Wow, that's very crazy. Can I draw power from here too? Uh, I guess if you become the leader of the end dimension and grow wings and the ability to harness power from crystals, sure. I can do that. What? Since when? Since yesterday. That's pretty impressive. How did you learn how to do that, Milo? Well, I just did a little spell in my garden. Oh, wow. That's a pretty impressive garden, Milo. You must really, really know your stuff. Yeah, I'm like a wizard now and stuff. Whoa, what? Did you go to Hogwarts? Well, yeah. That's impressive, Milo. I guess you must have met Harry Potter and Dumbledore. What's that? Oh, Milo, what Hogwarts did you go to? Just the place. Milo, did you just go to a really gross pig? Yeah, that's what I did. Ew, Milo, that's disgusting. Why would you learn from a gross pig? How to be a wizard. Why do you keep judging me? Whilst I checked, you couldn't do magic. You're right, I can't do magic. I wish I could, though. Imagine all the amazing good I could do for the animals and mobs of the world if I had magical powers. Yeah, I guess so, but you'd definitely also be trolling me. Yeah, that would be the best part. I'd be able to do so much trolling of you, Milo, that you would never, ever forgive me. Although, I guess I could use my magic powers to make you forgive me like a genie. Well, that sounds really naughty. You're right, Milo. I would never use my magic powers to upset you. I might just play a little prank every now and then. But look, this amazing end pillar section is really coming together. Now it is time to build the ender dragon roost section. This is the nest where the ender dragon comes to perch. It's pretty important we build this right. And it's pretty important that we grab the dragon egg and put it right down there. Oh, this is awesome. I can't wait to see the dragon egg hatch. Yeah, me too. It's gonna be a little baby. I don't know, Milo. It could hatch right into the giant ender dragon. We won't know until it's time. We also need to place these end crystals all around the towers, just like this. Ah! Hey, Milo, that almost scared me. Be careful. We don't have time to waste playing around like this. We need to be very careful. Yeah, but I'm the ender dragon. I know, Milo. I see the head. But we need to add a couple more things. We need to add some purple pillars and some purple stairs. These are the outer reaches of the end where we will need to spawn the shulkers. If we don't place these down, the shulkers will not actually have a place to live. And if we need to harvest some more resources to make more chests for everybody, we won't have anywhere to go after the hacker destroys them all. Shulkers are really tricky. They are pretty tricky, Milo. You're right. They always teleport around and hide in their shell when they try not to get caught. They are a very, very mischievous and mysterious group of mobs. So mysterious! And very mischievous. Now we just have to make some more shulker stations on the other side and we'll be done with the sixth house. Milo, we really don't have a lot of time. Once we place down these final few purple pillars, we'll need to start actually spawning in the mobs before the hacker gets here and tries to destroy everything. I totally forgot we haven't spawned the mobs in yet! Oh no! 
It's okay, Milo. We can't forget. I'm sure there's nothing else we're forgetting. Now, Milo, we need to start spawning in all of the mobs. This is how we will make sure we stop all of them from dying to the evil hacker. Hey, look, there's a little guy in here. Yeah, that's the Shulker. He lives inside a really big shell. It's really, really cool. They're really nice until they start shooting you with their levitation orbs. Well, that's very mean. Yeah, they can get pretty mean, and so can the Endermen. That's why we need to spawn them right now. These Endermen will teleport everywhere, but luckily, if we spawn enough of them, we should be totally fine. Look, these are the minions of the Ender Dragon, and I'm sure they will serve him well. Hey guys, I hope you like the house we built for you. Now that we've spawned in all of these Endermen and all of these Shulkers, we need to spawn in the Ender Dragon. Are you ready, Milo? What? Whoa, look, it actually spawned. That is amazing. Luckily, he's totally frozen by the power of this one crystal. This is important, Milo. It means he won't fly away and be destroyed by the hacker. That would be really sad if he actually disappeared forever. Luckily, he totally won't. Now, we need to spawn in the Wither Skeletons and the Wither. Do you think you can do that with me, Milo? Well, yeah, but I don't really think one, two. Me too, Milo. Let's spawn in the Wither Skeletons here. Oh yeah, they look great above the little Wither heads. This is so awesome. And now, if you remember, Milo, we promised we would go back into here and spawn the real Wither. Hey, Wither, you better be on best behavior. Otherwise, Milo's gonna have a real thing to say to you. Yeah, I agree, Milo. Okay, we need to make sure we spawn this Wither well. I'm taking this skull off the wall and putting it right on the Wither. And whoa, look, the actual Wither is spawning. He's Whoa, his boss bar is charging. Take cover, Milo. Wow. Whoa, that could have been real bad. Luckily, he's trapped inside the bedrock. Let's dig underneath to get out of here. That could have been really bad if we did anything else. Now, Milo, we can start spawning in the blaze. Yeah, there they are. These guys are really cool and pretty. Wow, they look really awesome. And we can also start spawning in the zombified piglins. We won't spawn in the regular pigmen because they will totally just turn into zombified piglins. Yeah, and they'll probably try and fight me as well. Exactly. We also need to grab magma cubes and ghasts to spawn them inside this nether area. Quickly now. We don't have much time. You're right, Milo. We totally don't. Look at that ghast. Wow, it's amazing. We also need to spawn in the warden inside the warden house. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Look, there he is, Milo. Make sure you don't make him angry. He's gonna try and escape, but he should be totally safe inside there. Whoa, he's looking at me! Oh, wow, that could be real bad. Instead of him looking at you, let's go inside the creeper, zombie, and skeleton house. Let's grab the different eggs that we will need to spawn in. We have to go quick, Milo. We do not have much time before the hacker gets here. And Oh no, this is bad. Hang on, wait, where did the zombie go? Okay, they're all safe in this house. We need to quickly spawn in the pillagers before time is too late. Oh goodness gracious. We need vindicators, evokers. Oh gosh, there are so many. We also need the vex, not to mention the pillagers. They are one of the most famous ones. And finally, we can't forget the ravagers. Let's spawn the vindicators on this ground level here. Then we can spawn the evokers inside. Whoa, they look just like the statue we made. Let's also spawn the vex around them since they are their summon creatures. On this level, guarding the emerald loot, we will spawn all of the pillagers with all their amazing crossbows. Look, this one even has a banner. Hey, he really does. I think it means he likes his house. Yeah, me too, Milo. And on the very top level, we will spawn the ravager. Whoa, look how big he is. I really don't like this guy. Neither do I. He's pretty scary. Let's quickly leave. And I know we only have one minute left, but I think we're forgetting something, Milo. Yeah, we Wait a minute, Milo, we're forgetting our Iron Golem friend, Ian. Oh, it's okay, I'll just spawn him down. What? Milo, no, 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 we need to summon him properly, remember? I need to grab iron blocks and a carved pumpkin. This is the only way to summon Ian. We've got to make him a little iron platform so the hacker cannot get him. And surrounding the iron platform, we will also need to place some iron bars. These are very important, Milo. I can't believe we almost forgot this. If we had forgotten these, we would have lost our friend Ian, Milo. That would have been so bad. That would have totally Exactly. We've built every other mob in Minecraft their very own house, so it's only fair to make one for Ian as well. Are you ready, Milo? Let's do it! And boom! Okay, we totally made one for Ian. All right, I think this is good. No, I don't like these iron bars. I want him to be free! 
Milo, we can't let him be free. These iron bars will protect him, but oh no, there's no time. The server's being hacked in three, two, one. Oh no, it killed our friend Ian. <laughs> Oh no, we saved every other mob except our friend. Now I'm really gonna cry. Oh no.